Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about asthma. As we know, asthma is a very common problem and it affects individuals of all ages. There is no age predilection for asthma. Asthma is defined as a airway disease because of chronic airway inflammation. It is characterized by varied respiratory symptoms which includes shortness of breath, cough, chest tightness and wheezing all of which are they will be varying with time and intensity. All these are associated with variable expiratory airflow obstruction. Usually when air enters into our lungs it goes through the airways. So in asthma these airways will be narrowed at various points. It may be large airways or smaller airways and this narrowing is not uniform. It will be different. So when air passes through these different airflow minimum narrowing, it raises to the asthma symptoms. So around 1 to 29 percent of whole world population is affected by asthma in various countries. Primarily, asthma is differentiated as allergic and non-allergic. So what do you mean by allergic asthma? The presence of asthma symptoms which are shortness of breath, cough, chest tightness and wheezing in a patient with symptoms of eczema, itching, seasonal rhinitis or any other such allergies with or without relevant family history. In such individuals, usually the presence of asthma is diagnosed as allergic asthma. So, what is non-allergic asthma? Whatever things which are not covered as the above definition that is patients who does not have any his family history or who does not have any clinical history of allergic symptoms if they develop asthma symptoms, these are classified as non-allergic asthma. There are various other types also like exercise induced asthma, adult onset asthma, various types are there which are only categorized basing on the population phenotypes. Asthma is primarily an airway disease. It usually comes because of the hypersensitivity of the airways. There is no particular cause to say that this causes asthma. There are multiple causes including genetic. Genetic factors play most important role in cases of allergic asthma. In rest of the non-allergic asthma cases, genetics might not play an important role. In the same way, what triggers asthma in a previously normal individual? The most common triggers include any viral infections, strong odors include, including deodorants, perfumes, any smoke and any other things like seasonal changes, changes, sudden change in climate, sudden change in weather, temperatures, all these things they might trigger in a known asthmatic or a patient whose airways are more hypersensitive. As I told in the earlier slide itself, there is no age predilection for asthma. Asthma can happen in a 1 year old boy or it can even appear in a 90 year old old man. So there is no relative age prevalence. Asthma is primarily diagnosed by two important things. One is history and clinical presentation along with clinical examination. Second one through various tests. Coming to history and clinical examination, the relative findings in an asthma patient are the classical wheezing, cough, shortness of breath, chest tightness that varies with time and intensity and with season. If a patient comes with these findings, then we have to suspect that a particular person has a probability of being asthmatic. 
it is not necessary for all patients to have all the four symptoms one or more symptoms they may confirm the diagnosis of asthma so once a patient who comes with the above clinical history he needs to be subjected to next set of investigations the most important are pulmonary function test this pulmonary function test measures the airway flow through our airways this flow especially as we discussed asthma is a expiratory air flow limitation this can be measured with the pulmonary function test as of now today latest are impedance oscillometry is there total body plethysmography is there all these tests they will help in labeling a person as asthma and the thing is it's not only a seasonal variation the asthma patient symptom may vary from morning to evening so for easy diagnosis or to know the status quo of a known asthmatic patient there is another test called peak expiratory flow rate pefr by doing this in the morning and evening the diurnal variation may also give a sign or suggest the possibility of diagnosis of asthma other rare but risky diagnostic procedures are like bronchial provocation test in bronchial provocation test we usually give a medication that settles or incites an already hypersensitive airway to develop bronchial narrowing resulting onset of symptoms in allergic asthma there is a test called skin prick test this skin prick test usually it measures the allergy development of allergy reaction of the body to particular allergens nowadays skin prick test is being avoided because it is usually the pain of the as it's done through pricking the needle on the skin so nowadays we are using other manifestations like blood allergen test serum total immunoglobulin e and other specifications there are various other diseases that behave like asthma like covpd allergic bronchitis even in aspergilloma abpa allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis in all these conditions the same symptoms will be there but for example in abpa the symptoms will be along with there will be elevated serum immunoglobulin e along with specific aspergillus specific ige coming to covpd it is the most common disease that actually coexists with asthma or it is usually confused with asthma nowadays expert panel says that asthma and covpd are not two individual diseases actually it is a spectrum of the same disease in which asthma is the starting point covpd is the ending point so how do we differentiate an asthma from covpd usually in covpd it is more because of any smoking or any cystic fibrosis like xenotic disease or because of prolonged exposure to pollutants in these cases the pft which shows reversibility in airway narrow airway reaction with uh, asthma will be lost that means in a covpd the pft will be showing irreversible change so coming to radiological diagnosis in asthma usually ct chest scan or x ray they will be normal until in an acute episode where there may there may be hyperinflation because of airway trapping other tests sometimes which we usually use in a case of allergic asthma sputum for eosinophils will be sent in which they might be elevated in non allergic asthma sputum may or may not contain eosinophils neutrophils or it may be not uh, actually it may not be any useful if a patient who is a known asthmatic still has symptoms despite of best possible treatment it comes to the notice whether there is a permanent change in the caliber or there may be pulmonary narrowing or there is may be a possibility of foreign body aspiration into young kids or to old people in such cases radiological diagnosis along with bronchoscopy might be useful in diseases like tb sarcoidosis ilds the symptoms may present if the airway is much more involved in such cases sputum evaluation along with bronchoscopic 
cellular lavage may be of some help. When it comes to the treatment of asthma or any such airway disease like COPD, inhalers play the important role. There is a doubt among common people that starting inhaler might be an indication that inhaler needs to be taken for throughout the life or sometimes they think it has blind by superstition that inhaler is not good for health and it will cause so many side effects. The best treatment for asthma or any airway disease including COPD is proper inhaler technique. The inhaler it will contain different medications. Most common medications that we use in the treatment of asthma are inhaled corticosteroids, short acting beta agonists, long acting beta agonists, short acting muscarinic agents, long acting muscarinic agents. When a patient who is already on inhalers, if he develops any exacerbation or flare up of symptoms, then they can be started on oral steroids along with other bronchodilators such as esobrophilin, doxyphilin, theophilin. Montelukast a molecule has a property of decreasing the allergic tendency of the airways. So, it is commonly employed to treat acute asthmatic attacks. The most important of a asthma treatment is correct inhaler technique. Inhalers are again multiple types, it depends on whatever it is. Basically, they may be multi-dose inhaler or gaseous type of inhalers. The second one is dry powder inhalers or capsule form of inhalers. The rest of the inhalers fall into these two categories. Multiple dose inhalers or MDIs, they are most commonly employed for people who can hold do a proper technique along with breath holding. So, this is most suitable for ages greater than 12 years up to 50 years. Less than 12 years and greater than 50 years, usually it will be difficult to hold breath. So, in such a cases, either dry powder inhaler in form of rotor caps or nebulization in form of pure nebulizer machine can be of useful. Most of the cases have a doubt regarding whether nebulization is good or inhaler is good. If you ask any of the pulmonologists, they will be saying that they are both of equal efficacy, but when we compare nebulization has a much more drug wastage when compared to properly used inhaler technique. So, as any disease, airway disease, asthma may also have long term complications. The most common if asthma is not properly treated or ill treated or if patient does not follow proper guidelines, then it will become chronic asthma and the airway which we have described as uh, recurrent variability they may come as persistent airflow limitation might be there. In such cases patient needs to be use these inhalers throughout their life. The next thing asthma patients are more prone to develop other respiratory infections such as pneumonia and viral infections. Sometimes if asthma may also be life threatening when it is called status asthmaticus. In such cases there might also be requirement of support of ventilator. Other cases include uh, this may lead to severe coughing, nocturnal coughing may lead to vomiting, gastroesophageal reflux disease, recurrent sinusitis, sometimes subconjunctival hemorrhage, intracranial bleed, everything is possible. There are also instances where a poorly treated asthma whom, which were complicated by development of pneumothorax or air in the chest between lungs and the chest wall. As we have discussed earlier, there is nothing to prevent because it is the genetic makeup or the airway itself is made up. So, hypersensitivity cannot be removed. The thing is, once a patient or a person finds it that he is developing asthma or symptoms because of an exposure to something, it be, it's better to avoid those things. This prevents most of the asthma exacerbations. Change in climate is most commonly triggers and most of the asthmatic symptoms occurs in night or early mornings. So, if a patient develops those symptoms, it's better to take immediate inhaler therapy. 
So, what about the genetics? As I told earlier, allergic type of asthma may have genetic predisposition. So, asthma usually runs in the families. That means, a person who is asthmatic may have his progeny also develop asthma, but it does not necessarily that every asthmatic patient may, uh, will have a family history. Regarding vaccination, any person who is having airway disease or any, that, if that comes to that, any person who is having any lung disease will be requiring to take vaccine. Every year flu vaccine needs to be taken. In the same way, pneumococcal vaccine for every 5 years needs to be taken. And regarding COVID vaccine, it does not necessarily that uh, they should avoid COVID vaccination. In fact, persons with asthma they are required to take COVID vaccine as in compulsion. Asthma is not 100% curable, it can be controlled. Cure is something that is told when it will not happen again in your life. But asthma is a part and parcel of your body. So, it is needs to be well maintained with proper medication and proper personal hygiene and proper care.